Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be importing an STL file of an aircraft undercarriage for RC planes and we're going to reinforce these legs so what we're going to do is convert this to something that we can use in FreeCAD to allow us to amend this using the part and mesh workbench. So we need to amend this leg or these legs and also this groove. I want to remove this groove from in here. So you can see the groove in here. To amend STL files in FreeCAD, we have to go through a number of processes first to prepare the model. And then we can start using the part workbench to slice it apart, do boolean operations against it, and replace the parts in there using standard sketch, lofts, booleans, extrudes, etc. So this originally came from Patreon. And this video will be first going out to them and then I'll be sharing it with the wider community. So let's have a look at how we would do this. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. First of all, we need to import the STL file. So I've already opened FreeCAD and I've imported it. And this is just a basic file import. We just import and pull in the STL file. I've already pulled this in, so I need to prepare it. I'm going to first come out to view and toggle the axis cross. You note that the point of origin of the scene where the axis cross is, is over here. This will mean if I right click and transform this, the handler will be at that point as well. So the point of rotation for this object is off. We have to fix that first to make our life a lot easier. To do that, we click on the mesh that's been imported from the STL file and right click and transform. And we move the mesh over to the axis cross and line it up to where we want it. So I want it about something like this. That'll do me. If I hit OK. Now we can take this first steps in converting this to a solid so we can use it in FreeCAD. Though we haven't fixed the point of rotation, the next step will actually fix that. So we're in the part workbench. I've got the mesh selected. Come up to part. And then we have to create shape from mesh. Click the sew shape and just take the defaults. What this will do, this will create a shape from that mesh to allow us to create a solid against it. You can see we've got two objects on the left hand side here. We've got the original mesh, which we can press the spacebar on or even delete that out and leaves us with the shape. This is a shell. If I slice this in half with booleans, this will actually be a shell. By doing this and moving it into this center point, if I right click and transform this, you'll notice that our center of rotation is all fixed. So that's one job done. What I'm going to do now is refine this shape. If I look at this shape now, I can see we've got some flat faces on here. So this face here is flat. So it's a planar face, but you can see it's been cut into many sections, many faces there. Let's keep an eye on this and see what the refine does. So I'm gonna refine this shape and that just removes any extra faces in there that we don't need. So come up to part, come down to create a copy and then refine shape. What will happen on the left hand side, you'll see another object appear. And now this is the refinement of that shape. You can see the amount of edges that have been removed and the amount of faces that we're left with. So we've got a much cleaner object. If I control click the one that's been hidden in our original shape, along with our new shape, and press the spacebar, we get a toggling effect between those. So you can see if I press the spacebar, we're toggling between the visibilities of those. And we can zoom in and just press the spacebar and inspect the differences. So you can see that there and obviously on that one as well. 
So we've got this one here, the refinement of the shape, which we'll do in the next operation against. This is still a shell. So we've got to convert it to a solid. Go up to the part and convert to solid. We now have a solid shape that we can deal with. Let's hide the original shape. Now we have the solid. So there's two tasks for this. Now we've got the part ready to go and to ready to edit. We need to thicken up this leg, this one here, and also remove this groove from inside this circle. And the same on the other side. Because this is symmetrical, I'm gonna work on one side and use symmetry to copy the changes back over to the other by using the mirror. First of all, I need to slice this into a number of parts. So I want to slice to create it symmetrical. I want to slice across here to remove this part of the leg. And also I want to slice here to remove the wheel. So we're going to replace this section in here. And I'm going to make this leg thicker. So I'm going to loft a new section across here going to this wheel, keeping the same width here, but increasing the width at the top. So we have need to basically section this across. Now we can do that with planes, because we're gonna use the slice apart feature that's in the part workbench. So we come out to part, split, slice compound or slice apart. We can use a tool in here, such as a plane, to slice this into many sections. So what I'm going to do now is create a number of planes and compound them together and to do our slicing all in one go. For that, I come up to the part and we've got to create a plane to actually create this tool with. So create primitives and straight away we get the plane. So there's a number of different items in here and we're gonna create a plane. It's around about 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. We can change the size afterwards. Hit create, and that will create that plane. We don't change the options in here for the length and the width, because that would just create another one. We do need a number of planes for the others as well. So let's create those. So let's create one a bit smaller. So by 30 by 30. So this one will slice this in half to get rid of this side. This one will slice the top and we want another one to slice the bottom. So we'll create another one as well. So we created three planes, hit close. So we've got those three planes in there. Let's move the first one. So right click, transform. Now look at our increments. I've adjusted mine. So I want this back to 15 degrees rotation. And that allows me to rotate those in 15 degrees segments. And we'll move that. What we're looking to do is basically create a boundary between the part we want to slice. So this should pass all the way through the object. So I'm going to slice through this middle point here. That's going through roughly the middle there. Yeah, that's going through the middle. So that's good. So we've got that one in there. So you can see that's going right through the middle. We're using the edges of the original model to get ourselves positioned. Hit OK. Let's position the next plane, this one here, and I want to position this in line here. Now I could spend my time and create some kind of shape that follows this, but I'm going to show you a way of getting around that in a moment. I'm just going to use a plane to cut this. So let's grab another plane. So plane 001, right click transform, and we'll move that into position. First of all, let's move it over. Rotate this. And rotate this way as well and move it into position. Let's see what we've done. So let's bring this up. And 
I start moving this down. Actually, we do need some angle on there. And I'm not looking for a exact cut, but I want this basically nice and positioned. Let's try the bottom. There we go. And bring the back up. So you can see how that's cutting through there. And bring this down. And I'm just going to change the increment to one. So we've got one degree, I'm bringing this down. Just have to watch to make sure that the surface doesn't come through like that. And we'll bring this up a bit more. Make sure we encapsulate the whole leg. There we go. So that's going through there. And we want to do our last one, which takes out this wheel. So click on the plane, our last plane, right click, transform, and set this back to 15. Let's click on top. Actually, let's rotate this this way so it's flat first. and move this down and across there we go might find it a bit fiddly at first but once we get there so that's cutting through there that's fine now i want to bring this down because i've got a nice guideline there that line just about there Now we're going to change the increments to 0.1 and bring this down so it sits basically on that line. There we go. So that's gone all the way through there. And that's just, yeah, that's right in the middle there. So that's good. So I can use that for cutting. So now we've got all those planes in what do we do how do we go about cutting this now i like to cut these all in one go so i'm going to take all these planes control click them all so we selected all of them cut to part and compound make compound so create a compound in there let's save this so i've saved it as landing gear fix and we're going to take this compound and use this as a cutting tool against this object. So first of all, select the object, control select the cutting tool, cut part, split, and then slice apart. What happened? This will work away slicing this object using the compound tool. And once it's finished, it doesn't look any different but you'll see that we've got a line that runs along here and now there's a line that runs along here and we've got an object on the left hand side saying exploded slices if we open this up we've got four slices in here if we hover over them you can see that they're highlighting on the right so with a click on this one press the space bar you can see that's a separate slice so what slices don't we want well we want all the slices on the left hand side so we don't want anything on this side slice free so i just delete that that's got rid of that we also don't want this one so slice one let's hit delete and that gets rid of that one now we can go about strengthening our leg i want to keep this cross section i don't want to come out of this cross section I'm going to loft between this one and this one, but I want to keep the length here. So where the failing is happening, it's happening at the body. So we're going to increase the cross section of this leg. To do that, because we sliced this basically for a straight plane, if I click on that, I can create a sketch on there. Let's come over to the sketcher. Click on that face and then create a sketch. Flat face, okay. Now we're sitting flat face against this one. So you can see that there. 
And we've got the world in front of us, so we need to come up to the sketch and view section to cut through that will. So we temporarily got rid of the will and we can just see from the sketch downwards. So we need to position ourselves. We can't use a navigation cube because, well, we're basically, oh, we can do that. We're going to slip, select the size, so that's good. Because how we section through, through this, it's not on any of the main planes. So we just got to get ourselves positioned. I'm going to sketch an outline around this to strengthen this. So we're going to come out like one or two millimeters out from the side. I'm going to pull in the top geometry and I'm looking at vertices on these edges. So I'm just pulling in those with the external geometry tool, this one here. And I'm going to create a line, it goes along here, and I'm going to attach this line using these points with a point on line constraint. So take those and point on line. And we'll take these two points, let's zoom in. So these two points, put length in there of one mil. So we come out one mil and we'll do the same over this side as well. So these two points, a length there of one millimeter. So we've added a two millimeter thickness across there. That's actually go 1.5. So we get something that's a lot more thicker at the top. And let's come down and do the same here. So looking at these vertices going across here, import the geometry, come in and we'll click that point. So we've got lots and lots of lines in here so I can select the points there. And I'm going to create an arc this time. So you're using the end point and rim point arc. And we'll connect. We've got the auto constraints on. So in the edit controls, we've got the auto constraints and the avoid redundant auto constraints. So I'm going to hover over that point, coincident to there, and create an arc. It comes in to about here. And we'll add some arc to that and constrain this using these two points, place those in line. And that looks about right, so that's fine. So let's add some radius to that. So 90 millimeters radius, so that's in there. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna come in and auto constrain to this one with an endpoint and rim point arc and come out and do exactly the same. So bring this around hit escape, take these two points, place them in line, and make these two equal. So we've got some equality across there. Those are done now, so we need to come around and bring this around to here. Now, do I want to stop at this arc, or do I want to place it into here as well? So we just stop short. I don't know. We'll decide that in a minute. So that's come in and pull in some more geometry. So I'm following about, and I'm thinking placing an arc around here and it probably will stop about, about here. So let's bring in that point and that point. So those two, and we'll create another arc. So come into here, bring in that round and let's do the other side as well. And while we're here, we place an arc from here to here and just bring this around. And I'm going to go for an arc like this. So we're just coming around and just touching against there. Also, it's up to you what profile we want in here. And we'll take these two points, keep them in line. And also these two as well, keep those in line. Let's try that one again. This one and this one. Place those in line. We'll set the radius. Let's go for five on that. And we'll set the radius for these two as well. And that one as 11. So at the moment, 
these are in line but we need some constraints in here so I'm going to place some constraints across here those two 1.5 and we'll do the same with this one as well 1.5 see how those are constrained up there and we'll do this one 1.5 and this one, so these two, 1.5. So we're fully constrained. May reduce this down, say 1.25. Same for this side. Let's hit close, so we've got that profile that runs along there. So that gives us a bit more width. Now, what I want to do is loft from here to here. This is going to be one profile, so it's going to be a ruled loft. So I don't have to create this sketch on this side because we're using the part workbench. It gives us the flexibility to loft between profiles that are made up of either a sketch or a face. So I'm going to take this face and extract it out. For that I need the draft workbench and there's a tool in there. So I've come over to the draft workbench and we have a tool in here. So if I select that face of that wheel, come out to draft in, we've got something called a face binder. If I click that on the left hand side, a face binder has been added to that face. And what it is, if I click on the wheel and press the space bar, we just have a face here, so it's extracted out of that face. Let's bring about that wheel. While I'm here, I'm going to rename this slice and call this wheel slice. So I know which one it is. And also I'm going to rename this slice as well and call this top slice. We can see that a gridding has appeared. So this is draft workbench gridding and we can come down and just turn that off down the bottom here. It's a toggle gridding on and off. So we have our exploded slices with the wheel slice, the top slice, and now the sketch and also the face binder. Those are the sketches actually inside the exploded slice, but that's fine, we can deal with that. Let's come back over to the part workbench and add our loft. So that's loft between the sketch and the face binder, this one here. To do that, come over to the part, and in this menu, we can come down to the loft. Also available from the toolbar as well. You can see we've got the sketch and the face binder. So click the sketch and click the right arrow button. Or we can just double click on the item to pass it over. We now need the face binder, so it's going in order. There's only two of them, so it doesn't matter which order they go in. I double click the face binder. So we've got those in there. We need to create a solid and hit OK. We've lofted a new leg, but you can see we've still got a problem here. That we've still got a bit of spacing in here that we need to deal with, and also the back. This is no good because it would just snap off. So what I'm going to do is extrude upwards with the same profile. So I'm going to hide this loft by clicking on it and pressing the space bar, so that loft there. This profile, I'm going to make an extrude now. I'm just saving as well as I go along. So each successful part, I will save. I might even save to another file so I can go back to that file at a certain stage. So this profile, I'm going to extrude upwards. There's going to be a problem here because it's not going to extrude in the right line. So we need to extrude this in the right line. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Let's bring back the loft and click on that sketch. So we've got this sketch here. If we extrude, and we're extruding along the normal of that sketch, so along normal this way, so normal sketch is away from that sketch. If I extrude it 10 millimeters, it's going to go probably downwards 
Let's hit OK and see where that goes. So it's going downwards at the moment, so we want that to go up. So click on the extrude and go forwards. So minus 10 and hit enter. That's not right, so you can see how offline it is. So we need to extrude that using some other method. We really need it to follow this edge, which you can do. So I'm just gonna click on that extrude and delete that extrude. We can add the edge in the direction mode here. If we come into the direction mode and change this to edge, then we can select an edge in this direction link and click the button on the end and select this edge here. So this edge going up, click on that and click OK. Click off, you see that it's followed that edge but it's going the wrong way. So click on the extrude again and just change the minus back to a positive number. So that's gone that way, it's extruded up. We've still got some work to do to remove that. Let me show you how to do that extrude from the start. Let's click on that sketch and let's show that sketch. So we're going to extrude that sketch and do the extrude and from here we pick a long edge and then we need to select the edge by clicking select and now it's selecting and select the edge. You see the length is zero millimeters there. If I hit OK that's gone in the reverse direction but it's gone the length of this edge. So we come into the loft, press the space bar and reverse this. So come into the direction and well, if I try to reverse this, I'm gonna to have to reverse the length forwards or the length reverse. So I can place 10 on here and that goes up 10 millimeters in the reverse direction. So that's gone through there. And we need to do some more work with this. Let's just place this around about 20 millimeters. So it comes out the top. So remember to do actually do some cutting with this. We've got the loft hidden. Now what I want to do is split this using this as the slicing tool. So click on the one we want to keep, which is this one here. You may think we want to keep this one, but we're going to go in and find that one again. This is the one we want to slice. So click on the one we want to slice click on the slicing tool. So the one we want to slice, the one we want to slice it with. Part, split, slice apart. Now we have this exploded slice. Inside here we have four slices. And we can go through them and see them there. So we want to just get rid of this one at the top here. So click on it and just hit delete. That slice is gone. We've got the loft that sits on the bottom. Now we've got to go and find our original slice. So come into the slice and if I press the space bar on that one, we can see that one's there. Let's drill into this one. We've got the extrude and the top slice. Now this is the reason why we named it. So press the space bar on the top slice. So we've got that one there. And now we've got that one visible, that top slice. We can have a look to see which we want to keep. So we want to keep these two, we want to keep the top slice and this slice here, this one here, let's have a look see if we need that. And we don't. That's just part of that top part. So I'm going to hit delete on that one. So that's nice and clean now. And we'll bring back the loft. And you can see how this model is starting to build up. So I'm going to rename these to something like fillers. So I rename this to filler slice. And that looks like a left. And rename to filler slice right. Always rename as you go, because otherwise you can lose track of where these are. Now we've done that. The other thing we need to do is get rid of this groove in here. I'm going to remove this whole section. 
we've got a nice planner face. So I'm going to cut this part out. So coming over to the sketcher, let's start by clicking on this. Click on that face and create a sketch. Flat face, okay. So we've got that there. Let's see if we can bring in this circle. Now looking at it, if we look, it's made up of a number of edges. So we're not gonna be able to bring that in as a single circle. It's only gonna bring in vertices around there. What I'm going to do is just get an idea of how big that circle is. So I'm going to use a circle, place it about the middle and come out and something like that. And now we can get a dimension of that hole, constrained by a diameter, and we see that it's a three millimeter hole. So just going to cancel that and remember that's a three millimeter hole and we'll just get rid of this one. So I'm just going to come out and I need to place this basically in the center here. I've got nothing to place this against and let's bring in some geometry. So one from this side and one from this side. And what I'm going to do is place a line between those like so. Then this gives me a chance to use this as some construction geometry. So I've used that point against that line, point of line constraint that helps me out. And we'll make this point symmetrical to these put two points. So click on this one, click, we'll make sure nothing's selected first. Click on one, click on the other, and then click on the middle point last and use symmetry. Redundant constraint free, which is the point on line constraint. Let's click on that and hit delete. So that's symmetrical to that center. I need to actually take that line and make a construction geometry now. So click on that line, come up to sketch, sketch geometries and toggle construction geometry. It's available from the toolbar as well. Because we don't want this line being visible because it will break our extrude. We can't have a circle with a line in the middle. It just wouldn't work. So that's placing diameter across here. At the moment, it's 16. So 16. So that looks about right and hit close. So we've got the sketch in there. Let's extrude that sketch by coming over to the part and extrude it. And that's extrude it. Let's go for 10 millimeters and hit OK. It's extruded the wrong way, so it's come down to the extrude. And well, let's make this minus 10. Now we need to come out the other side, and that was a good guess actually, so there's 10 millimeters there. Now I'm going to cut this out. So I'm going to use the one that I want to keep, which is the wheel. So the wheel slice here, the one that I want to remove, which is the extrude. Cut part. I'm going to use a boolean operation. So boolean and cut. That will cut that away from there. We've still got some edges. So what I'm going to do is just make that come into the extrude and that sketch. So you can see the cut there. We've got the wheel slice of the extrude. Double click that sketch. And I'm going to make this. Let's double click that. 16.5 mil, so it takes that out and hit close. That's better, so that's cleanly cut there. You can see we've got the cut, which is the wheel, so I'm gonna rename that to wheel cut. And come in and find that extrude. So this extrude here, and press the space bar, bring that back. So we've got that extrude there. I'm going to add a sketch to the extrude for the hole. So come back into the sketcher, click on that face and create a sketch. Flat face, OK. And we'll bring some geometry in. So we bring in this circle and we get a center point, which I can add in the hole to so create a circle that's also constrained to that center point. And we'll add the diameter and it was three millimeters, that hole there. Let's hit close 
and we've got to do the same again so come over to the part and we'll extrude that and we'll do it minus 10 millimeters so that's gone through and out the other side you can see that flashing a bit there now take the extrude which is inside there and then take the other extrude so the one we want to keep the one we want to remove and do a cut which is the boolean cut so this one here obviously part boolean cut but we just use it from the toolbar this time that's cut through there that would make a separate cut so we've got the wheel cut and the inner wheel so rename that inner wheel cut so you can see we're doing a number of operations and basically slowly building this up always rename so we don't get ourselves confused these are separate objects now so we've got the inner wheel cut and the wheel you can see the separate objects there so we now need to combine everything together so everything we see on the screen we need to combine together so to do that we need to select everything so we can click on the top which is the top slice we now need to click on the individual filling parts which is this part in here or we can select it from this side so control click this one and control click that one so we've got those so we've got the top slice those we've selected it by a face but that means the whole lot is selected anyway we now need to select loft which is this so you can see the loft is selected so hold it down the control i'm moving this i've taken my finger off the control i can move as long as i haven't clicked on anything i'm okay we need the wheel so the wheel which is wheel cut and also the inner wheel got all those selected and we can union those together. So part, boolean and union, also available from the toolbar here. And we let that just do its stuff. It may take a little while, but just let it do its thing. So now that's finished, we have a fusion. And you see all of those in there grayed out. Now, now we have a fusion, we've still got that face binder, so I'm pressing the space bar, you can see the face binder there, that's still visible, but that won't be part of our model. So the finished fusion, like the part, and mirroring. We want to mirror this across, let's have a look at the planes, now which way is this round? So we want to put a mirror across here, so this is the ZY plane, well, actually the YZ plane, so this one here, because I'm upside down. That's it, okay. And we have our mirror. And we can fusion these together by coming into the mirror and coming down. So we've got the mirror, we've expanded the mirror open, so we get both of them there. Or we can just control click them from the screen. So click once, control click the other so you can see those have been selected we selected the fusion inside the exploded slices which is interesting but let's hide that one as you can see it's the same one we press the space on there you can see the other ones vanish in there so we can take those two and let's create a fusion of those to gain part boolean and union those of fusion together so you can see the fusion there which is the finished fusion finished mirrored fusion now we have our fused and completed model all we need to do is come over to the mirror make sure it's highlighted and we can export that as an STL and now we have our new model File import and we're all ready to go. 
We can use the same process for a number of STLs. It all depends on what you want to do in there. But the part workbench allows you to split an STL apart with slices. And from there, you can use the Boolean tools to reconfigure the model and add more geometry and shape to the end product. Hope you found that useful and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.